A lot of you have been impressed by the fake 3D rotation and the parallax effect that you can achieve inside CS3. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Ali and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create fake 3D rotation as well as some parallax effect in your scenes to add a lot of engagement and keep impressing your viewers. The cool thing about this is that we're going to create everything entirely in CS3. We won't use any photo editing. We're not going to use AI. We will create everything entirely in CS. So I want you to follow along with me step by step. You may want to have your CS3 account opened up uh, so you can keep following and practicing until you get better at it. So without further ado, let's dive right into this. First things first, I've got a couple of examples that I want to share with you so you can watch what type of examples we're going to create together and then we'll be back to creating together. <laughs> we've watched the examples it's time for us to start creating so first things first we need a background and that is going to be the one that we'll be working with where to find it you can simply go under studio open up backgrounds open up the drop down menu choose 3d and on the search bar type in wood office and you should be able to find it right there just drag and drop it onto the canvas looking at this background you can see that it has multiple objects how do we know this if we look on the right panel under settings, we can see the different layers of the objects that we don't need in this scene. So in order to take these off, we simply right click the group in the timeline, choose ungroup, and then we're going to remove the unnecessary objects by deleting the laptop image, the desk and the chair, but we're going to keep everything else. In order to stay organized, what we're going to need to do is select the image, basically the background, right click that, and then we're going to rename it and then call this BG stands for background. And then we're also going to need to make a duplicate of it so we can create our left wall. So what we're going to do is uh, control or command D in order to make a duplicate. Right click that one, rename it and call this left wall like that. And then next up, we're going to need to use some masks in order to create that wall. So I'm going to hit shift letter R to grab a rectangle. I'm going to resize this rectangle to fit the left side of my background right about here. I want to make sure that it goes across the screen uh, vertically just like that and it's on the left side as well and then from there we can just uh, keep selecting the uh, rectangle shape along with the left wall so you can hit shift and then select or highlight the left wall layer in the timeline right click these guys and then mask them together now we have our left wall by looking at the background we can see that there's a little bit of shadow or darkness on the left side so we want to bear that in mind while we're creating or designing our scene. So in order to make this right, so we need to go under settings and find where it says properties. And then the last option says flip. So we can just flip this horizontally, just like that. And now we see the uh, shadow is flipped onto the right side. So all we're gonna do is gonna uh, zoom out of our scene, just like that, and drag this guy over to the left side, make sure it's lined up with our scene like this. And then it's best when you deselect everything, you go under settings where it says, canvas mode click on show so you can see everything um, out that is outside the canvas just like that and then from there again so we got everything covered all we need to do is to start um, adding some other objects into the scene so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a light reflection onto the left wall right there i'm also going to make a duplicate of my bookshelf right there and place it on the left side um, to the left side of the window right there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this bookshelf by hitting the control D and then I'm going to drag it to the left side right there. So it should be right about here onto the left side. I'm also going to flip it so that, you know, it lines up with the, the shadows in the background. So I'm going to, I'm going to go under settings where it says properties. I'm also going to click on flip horizontally. So I can just flip it like that. I'm also going to resize it, make it a little bit smaller, just like this. So there's going to be a little bit of difference between the size of this one and the one on the right side. Next up, uh, we want to create our a light reflection so what we're going to need to do is grab a circle by hitting the shift key and the letter c in order to grab a circle and then from there we could just resize it uh, shrink it down just a little bit like that and then we're going to position it onto the left wall like this right there and we're going to choose a different color of it so we can open up uh, the color settings um, from the right panel uh, choose the color picker and then we can pick you know the light 
blue in there. We can also make it a little bit darker because the left wall should be a little bit darker than the rest of the scene. So it's something like this should work really well. And then from there, we can also go into the effects and components icon on the left panel. And we're going to add some blur effect to it to make it blend in with the wall, right? So I'm going to drag the blur effect onto the uh, circle or the oval, just like that. And then I'm going to also increase the strength of the blur effect just like this. And I'm going to go back to the settings tab, then decrease its opacity a little bit, just like this. Now I have my wall, uh, my light reflection onto the left side. Everything looking good so far. All I need to do next is simply stretch out or extend the circle layer and the timeline and make sure it's lined up with the rest of the layers. I'm going to right click that one, rename it and call this one light reflection right there. And then from there, I can also uh, group things up, right? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to group the background along with the video clips underneath it, which is pretty much the exterior on, and the right bookshelf, right? So I'm going to select that guy along with the background. Oops, let's select that guy right there along with the uh, background and the video and the video clip. So let's just select all these. We got them covered. Let's make sure that we have everything selected. So just a couple of videos that are at the very bottom of the timeline along with the background and the um, bookshelf, as well as the one on the uh, on the left side. So the one on the right and the one on the left. Once we do that, we right click and then group these guys just like that. And we're going to rename this one. So right click, rename and then call this background. And then we're also going to need to group the second wall or the left wall on the left side along with our light reflection. So we we'll select that along with the uh, circle, right click both and then group them up together, right click again, rename, and then we're going to call this one left wall, just like that. And then it's time for us to start um, adding some animation to create that rotation effect. Before we do that, we also want to go into the studio back again and then grab our um, character creator so we can click that 3D creators. You can work with any character you want. It's totally up to you. But for me, I'm going to get Tom right there. And then I'm going to change the action so I can go under settings, uh, click on the actions tab, and then I'm going to change this from idle to working on PC. So let's just choose that right there. And then I want to keep Tom working throughout the whole time from start to finish. So how do we do this? We simply click on the working on PC um, icon that shows up on the character track in the timeline to open up this little panel right there where it says disable start and disable end. I want to turn these guys on so we can keep Tom working the whole time from start to finish. Then we want to extend a layer of the character all the way to make sure that this is lined up or perfectly lined up with the rest of the layers just like that and then we're also going to need to select our character click on the rotate icon that shows above the character in order to get into the uh, character uh, view or rotation mode and then rotate our character in the right angle so we can make him face the camera and he's back towards the window just like this so we want to make sure that we have um you know, rotate it in the right angle. And then once you're done, you simply click on the rotate icon one more time to exit the rotation mode. OK, and then in order for you to start animating, we're going to start with our background. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to move my playhead forward in time because I want to delay the animation, but I don't want it to start from the beginning of my scene. I'm going to keep a little bit of time, just a few frames. So we're going to start at 24 frames in the timeline. And then we're going to start adding our animation. So I'm moving my playhead where it says 24 frames on a timeline. And then I'm going to select my background right there. Uh, then I'm going to add some rotation animation. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go under settings. Or, I'm sorry, I'll go onto the right panel and click on the properties tab. And then from there, um, we need to make some adjustments. But before we do that, there's one step that I totally forgot, which is simply click on add animation so we can add our keyframes, right? Otherwise, it's not going to work. So forgive me about that. Let's just keep working and creating our scene. So I'm going to choose a position. I'm also going to do a scale rotation. And I might want to do a distortion. Just keep that um, in case we want to use it. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the second keyframe all the way to about uh, five seconds. And make sure that you have your second keyframe selected. It's turned to blue. That's how you know it's going to work. And then from there, we can go onto the right panel uh, where it says properties. You click on the properties tab, and then we're going to make our adjustments. So first thing is first, we're going to need to do is play with the rotation on the Y axis. So we're going to flip that a little bit to the 
left just like that. So something around, you know, negative 48 or maybe a little bit more just like that. And we're going to scale it up a little. So we're going to make the background a little bit bigger just like that. And then make sure that we drag our background a little to the right. How we do this, we simply hold the shift key on our keyboard. And then with our mouse, we could just drag the background a little bit to the right side, just like that. And then we go back from the beginning when start playing and then we take a look and see how that looks like. Okay, looking good so far. We're gonna need to go back from the very beginning where our first keyframe for the background. And then it's time for us to animate our second wall or the left wall. So we need to select it and then we do the same thing. We're gonna click on add animation and then under properties, we're gonna choose position. We're gonna do scale, uh, rotation, and we might wanna do distortion as well. So keep that selected as well, just in case. And then from there, we're gonna select, uh, we got our keyframes. We're gonna select our second keyframe from here. Uh, we're gonna move this guy, uh, make, make it exactly at four seconds and 20 four frames so this whole animation is going to happen in four seconds so we make sure that we drag our keyframes at four seconds and 24 frames we drag the second keyframe where our playhead is at and then from there we can just make our adjustments so from there i'm also going to scale this up a little just like that and then i'm going to go under settings uh, actually on the right panel click on the properties tab and then make adjustments so again it's going to be a rotation and we're going to play with the y-axis so we can just you know, flip it as well, right side actually like this. So it's going to be something like 48 and we're going to drag it a little bit to the right as well by holding the shift key and our, with our mouse and we're going to drag it just a little bit like that. And then from there, we can see how will it look like when we go back and then start playing this together. So we need to make sure that these guys are li perfectly lined up together. So as I'm moving my playhead forward in time, you can see that there is a little bit of gap between the background and the left wall. So it is all about fine tuning your key, your keyframes and making sure that they're distant from each other, a little bit of gap in order to line the animation exactly the same. Uh, you can't have both uh, keyframes on both layers exactly on the same same time or same speed because you're still going to end up with uh, some gap in between so we're going to go back and then fine tune our animation from here so let's take a look if we extend uh, the second keyframe of our background a little bit more and then we go back and then start you know reviewing this and see how that looks like okay we still have a little bit of uh, gap in there so we're going to try and play that so it's very important while you're adjusting this that you have your playhead exactly where the gap is happening just right right here and then we're going to drag the second keyframe a little bit closer like that and make sure it's pretty close to the left wall just like that and let's take a look Okay, it should be fine because once we uh, once we add our camera animation a little later, you want well we're not going to see this, so we're going to press play. There you go. Okay, it's just going to be fine. And we're going to click on the second keyframe from here and then drag this guy a little bit to the right side, just like that, so we can have a little bit of distance in the uh, left side of the screen, so we can add our floating screen where. Uh, we're going to display what's happening on the PC on a bigger uh, screen view. So let's just go back and then make our adjustments to the keyframes. Okay, this is looking good so far. So what we're going to need to do next is start animating our character. And so we click, we select our character. All we got to do is simply click on add animation. Again, we're going to start exactly uh, where the first keyframe of all layers underneath it are the same so we're going to click on uh, position and we're going to do uh, scale as well as character view under properties once we do that all we need to do is select our second keyframe drag it all the way and line this up with the second keyframe of our left wall just like that we make sure we select our keyframe um, it's turned in blue and then we're going to select our character and we simply want to click on the rotate icon above the character to get into the rotation mode and we're going to rotate our character a little bit to the left just like that and then when you're happy with that you simply just click on the rotate uh, icon one more time to exit the rotation mode you might want to scale them a little bit more if you want to have them a little bit bigger just like that and then position him a little bit to the left side all right once you're done you just go back to the very beginning and let's take a look at that so far so good let's just press play and see how that looks like 
Okay, looking good so far. Now it's time for us to create um, our uh, camera animation. In order to do that, we're going to need to go and click on the effects and components icon on the left panel and then uh, choose the uh, components tab or click it. And then from there, you can drag and drop the camera uh, component onto the scene just like that to get into the camera mode. And then from there, we can start our animation. I'm going to zoom in a little bit in the timeline like that. And then in order to add our, my animation, I'm just going to click double click on the uh, camera animation track in the timeline, which is usually at the very top of the timeline. Um, you can see that there's the camera icon on the left side and the camera track is a little bit lighter in color than the rest of the timeline. All you got to do is simply double click to add a camera animation from there. And then what you want to do is you want to start with a zoom in, uh, a, you know, onto the scene. So we have to have our playhead right before the camera animation bar in the timeline. And then we're going to adjust our camera frame to make it a little bit smaller, something like this. So it's going to be right here and it should be just at the very top of the scene, just like that. So we can cover the bottom part of the scene, just like this. And then what we want to do is we want to move our playhead forward in time, make sure that it's, it goes after the camera animation bar, and then we're going to drag it a little bit. So it's going to be still on the top, but we want to make sure that it's still, it's going to be um, a little bit towards the left. You can see that as I'm moving my camera frame um, away or out of the canvas, we see this red color. This is kind of like an alert. Hey, you're doing something wrong. You need to make sure you go back. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to resize my camera frame to make it smaller in size. And then I'm going to drag it inside the scene just like that here. And then from there, I'm also going to extend the, the camera animation bar in the timeline a little bit more, just like this. Let's go back from the beginning, take a look, and we should be good to go. Let's take a look. Okay, now we don't want to see the wall outside. So what we're going to need to do is select, uh, we have our camera animation selected. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we don't end up with the uh, wall in the back right there. And I want to make sure that my camera is in frame right there. And I might want to grab the wall along with the character a little bit to the right. So we have some space under the left side so I can add my floating uh, image. So I'm going to select that right here. Uh, select the second keyframe of my key of my character, drag my character a little bit to the right just like that. And then I'm also going to select the second keyframe of my left wall. I'm also going to select the second keyframe and then drag it a little bit to the right, just like this. Let's take a look at that from beginning to start and then press play, have a look. Okay. Now the next thing to do is simply click on the last second keyframe of your wall, and then you're going to need to extend this guy. So we're going to extend it from the right side like that so it basically you know um we scale it up to kind of line up with the background that's in the back and i'll show you that in a second so just follow along with me make sure that you scale it up from the right side right here and then we're going to go back in here okay pretty cool i think what we need to do is simply just drag the background layer and make it above the left wall so all i'm going to do is i'm going to drag the left uh, wall group and then drag it underneath the background right there and let's have a play and take a look at that and see what that looks like okay still need a little bit of fine tuning again this is trials and error you may not get it from the first time um, it took me some time while I was working it in the first place uh, before I make this tutorial so bear with me until we adjust the, the keyframes and make sure that everything is set as, and in position. So let's just go back to the, right there and take a look and see what's happening. Okay, press play and take a look. Okay, I think it looks it looks great. And then what we want to do is uh, we can add a an image inside the PC screen if you want to. Um, if you want to do this, you can simply just uh, import your own images into your project media, um, or you can simply go into the uh, media file, click on stock, grab any image, and then make sure that you, it is a, a landscape uh, image. So let's just open this up in full gallery, then we can go into uh, nature or maybe mountains, because that's the one I was using in my previous example. So let's just click that, import it into a project media, and then exit this window 
right there and then we go back into the project then we can simply select our character and then from there we can go under the right panel uh, we click on the customize tab and then we can simply just click on the logo from there we can choose the pc screen and then it's going to let us uh, choose one of the images that we imported into the folder so we select that and now we have our image set up right there it's time for us to add the same image and then animate it so that it also um you know slides into the scene as along with the uh, fake 3d rotation so we're going to start from the very beginning moving by moving by our playhead at the very beginning right there um, on the first keyframe of everything and then drag our image right there and i'm going to resize it right here let's just move our playhead forward in time to see where do i want to position it when this ends so it's going to be right here and then from there all i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, move my playhead at the very beginning right here extend it i want to make sure that i extend the layer as well to fit into the timeline just like that and then from here i'm going to add some animations to it so i'm going to do is i'll click on add animation it's going to be position uh we're also going to do rotation and distortion as well and then i'm going to uh, extend the second keyframe all the way line it up with the rest of the keyframes um, and then from there i will just go back to the first keyframe right here and then i'm going to make some changes to it so i'm going to go under settings properties i will uh, play with the 3d rotation on the y-axis like this so it's going to look like that and then i'm going to you know scale it down just a little bit i'm also going to drag it all the way out of my scene just like that and then i want to select my distortion icon above the image so i can distort it a little bit so it looks right when it gets into the scene just like that okay and then we select a second keyframe it should be right here we may want to rotate it a little bit also when it uh when it gets into the scene so what we're going to do is uh go into the 3d rotation on the y and rotate it a little bit just like this again i'm going to do the same thing click on uh, the uh, distortion make sure it's selected and then i can distort the image so i make sure it is in the right size that it doesn't look uh, skewed or distorted okay let's have a play and take a look at that okay it looks like it's still out of the scene so this is very important when you go on to click on the canvas mode um, and then make sure you click on hide. Now we see the canvas boundaries, so the image is still a little bit outside of the uh, frame. So I'm gonna click on the second keyframe and make sure that this guy is inside the scene, just like that. And then we might want to make it a little bit rounded if we want to, um, and then go back to the very beginning, press play and take a look. Okay, it's not perfect though. We need to get it inside, so I'm gonna drag it a little bit to the bottom. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and remove the uh, roundness. It'll look better that way. So let's just go back, press play. And there you have it. Now, the reason why you're using the camera animation is to, you know, complement the fake 3D rotation along with making a zoom in onto the display image or video that you're going to have um, above right there uh, because this is going to be the focus obviously people are not going to be able to see what's going on on the uh, pc screen so it's the reason why we have this uh, floating screen above uh, this is why we want to use our camera animation to uh, make a little bit zoom in and our viewers are able to uh, see what's happening in there so this is how you can achieve the fake 3d rotation inside cs without the need of help of ai or even photo editing now it's time for us to move on with the second uh, example uh, the other one is much easier so let's dive into creating it now let's remove everything that we created and then start from scratch and show you the second example and how easy it is to create a 3d rotation along with some parallax to add a lot of engagement so i'm going to select everything delete right click the camera animation bar and then delete animation and then start from from the beginning so i've got the image in my folder right here i'm going to drag and drop it onto the canvas and i got this image from freepig.com so i want to share with you a tip about working with these type of backgrounds that it's a very important now when you want to achieve this uh, type of effect you really want to have a similar room that looks like this where it's got the right wall and the left wall as well let me take you back to the uh, website freepig.com and these are the type of images that you can create so what you want to do is type in business office with side walls illustration uh, you can also 
click on the under license, click on the free icon if you're not a premium user. And I've already got some other examples that I can share with you. So this is an empty interior room design that you can use and, you know, and design it the way you want by adding other objects into the room. And then I've got other examples like this where we got the right wall and the left wall. This is also going to work great if you want to use it. Uh, you also got this one and we have another one right here that's also the same, similar to the previous examples. And then I've got this one the bedroom as well i'm going to leave a link to each background in the description so if you want to use those you can find their links in the description um, and then from there you can get some inspiration on how to get similar images from freepick.com back to create studio and then we want to create start creating so i'm going to start with uh going back to my studio and then i'm going to open up my 3d creator and then i'm going to grab tom right there uh, change his um outfit by going into the preset and then i'm going to choose that design right there and then i'm going to choose him i choose the action by uh, having to work on pc as well so i'm going to uh, scroll to the top go into the action tab and then change the action from idle to working on pc as well and then we're going to do the same thing so we're going to click on the working on pc um, icon that shows up above or on top of the uh, character layer in the timeline to open up this small panel and then we want to disable start and end animation and then from there uh, we can also extend the background a little bit more then we can select our character click on the uh, rotate um, icon so we can you know rotate our character like this and then once you are happy with that, you can simply just click on the rotate icon one more time to exit the rotation mode. And you can then you can uh, scale up your character a little bit more just like that. Here, let's take a look and see where do I want to position him. It's going to be a little bit to the right side, just like this. And then we can simply just create our animation. It's as simple as that. There's nothing much... Uh, but adding some keyframes and then you should be um, good to go. So I'm going to start with my uh, character. So I'm going to click on Tom, click on add animation, and then we're going to use a scale and then character view. I'll keep the uh, easing as is, but I'll just drag the second keyframe a little bit forward in time uh, to something before uh, four seconds. So three seconds and 22 frames. Select our second keyframe and then we're going to click on the rotation or the rotate icon above the character one more time to rotate him a little bit to the uh, left side, just like this. Okay, and then from there we can click on the rotate icon to exit that one more time. And we're going to have him scale up a little, so we're going to make him a little bit bigger, just like that. And then we're going to go back from the very beginning, so we now have our character you know, have a little bit of rotation just like this. And then from here, we can select our background and we're gonna click on add animation and we're gonna do uh, position and we're also gonna do rotation. Next up is uh, drag the second keyframe all the way um, to right before or after the uh, second keyframe of your character. Really depends on how you wanna do it, which one is faster, which one is slower, it's really up to you. Um, I'm going to make the background a little bit uh, faster, actually. So I'm going to select my second keyframe of my background right here. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to settings on the right panel where it says properties. Open that up. Uh, we're going to make some changes to the rotation on uh, 3D rotation on the Y axis. So we're going to, you know, have it rotate a little bit just like this right here. And so it's negative 18. And then we're going to position it a little bit to the left side just like that so let's go back and preview this from the beginning to take a look and see what that looks like okay it looks like i need to make it a little bit more so going back by selecting the second keyframe right there open up uh, properties under settings and i'm going to uh, increase the 3d um, rotation on the y-axis a little bit more just like that and then from here we could just go back and then start playing and take a look at that Okay, now it looks like the character is not perfectly lined up because he was actually, you know, his back was facing the window. So I'm going to click on the uh, second keyframe of my character, click on a rotate um, again, and then have and rotate the character a little bit to the right, just like this. And then from here, we could just go back to the beginning, press play. 
Okay, looking good so far. In order to uh, you know add some illusion to this um, and make it more fancy, we need to add some camera animation right there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to move my playhead forward in time and then double click to add a camera animation. Um, I already had it added previously, so I don't need to go back into the uh, components uh, because the camera mode was already there in the timeline. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to have my playhead before the animate the uh, camera animation bar, and then I'm going to scale this down. So I'm going to uh, resize my frame of the camera just make it a little bit smaller just like that so something like this right here and then what and then I'm gonna move my playhead after the camera animation bar I also want to the get the camera animation bar you know to to start from the very beginning and I'm gonna extend it a little bit more to about you know three seconds and a few frames just like that make sure that my playhead is after the camera animation bar and then I'm also gonna resize my camera frame right there and just want to make sure that it, it actually covers the image along with the character just like that like this so you don't want to have any black areas that shows up in the camera frame um then once you're done you just go back to the very beginning press play take a look and there you have it so i hope you found this helpful thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one